Rentero is a clueless virgin teenager who had zero riz and couldn't even talk to a girl without glitching like a bad DVD. When he finally summoned the courage to ask his crush out, he got brutally rejected just like the 99 times he tried in the past. However, things would soon change in high school that would somehow make ugly a** Rentero a cheat magnet who even got married to several women to make up for his past rejection. It all began when Rentero summoned the courage to confess his feelings and ask out his longtime crush. She told him she liked him yes, yes, yes! as one of her fans, No, no, no! but couldn't date him because the thought of dating a loser like him made her want to puke and die. This rejection sank Rento deep into depression that he wished he just died. While this friend walked him home, he cheered Rentero up and also made fun of him, as this was the 100th time he got rejected. He thought the Guinness World Record needed to interview him, but Rentero just stood there sobbing like an old lady who lost her purse, as he remembered the first time he got rejected by a girl. <laughs> Poor guy just wanted to know how it felt to have a girlfriend. His friend was confused as to why Rentero always got rejected, even when he had all the qualities of every girl's dream guy. His friend bid him farewell and wished him not so good luck in his love life in high school, which was probably going to be another tragedy. Later that day, Rentero went to a shrine to pray to the god of love desperately to give him a girlfriend even though he had zero redeeming qualities. He prays to God to help him live a life of joy and love when he gets to high school. Just then, he suddenly heard a strange voice that told him to worry not, as an old muscular head appeared from the donation box and said he was the great god of love. Rentero is startled and wonders why the god of love was an ugly old man who is scaring him to death with just his looks instead of a beautiful goddess, or at least a pretty boy like Justin Bieber. The god told Rentero he would meet his soulmate in high school and would have a joyful life. On hearing this, Rentero was so overwhelmed with the thought of actually meeting his soulmate in high school. The god then said he would meet a total of 100 soulmates, which was totally absurd and unbelievable, which made Rentero call the all-powerful love god a fraud and promise to burn down the shrine if it was a trick. One month later, Rentero got to high school, and little did he know that his 100 soulmate charm was about to begin. While Rentero was walking down the hallway, he accidentally bumped into two girls named Inda and Hakari. When he locked eyes with the girls, they both had a soulmate sensation and Rentero wondered if they were the soulmates the god talked about. As Rentero tries to help them up, Heka Ri pretends to have sprained her ankle and asks Rentero to carry her to the nurse's office. This made Rentero sob like a baby for unintentionally hurting a pretty girl. While he tries to pick Heka Ri, Inda gets jealous and also pretends to have sprained her ankle. Blockheaded Rentero starts punching himself as punishment for hurting Inda and Heka Ri, and this made the girls stand up to stop Rentero from destroying the little brain cells he had left, forgetting that they were supposed to be injured. Just as Rentero noticed them, they both fell back down and continued their terrible acting. As a simp, Rentero still helps the girls up to take them to the nurse's office. But it seems as though Rentero is the one being carried instead. On their way, the girls begin to fight for a space to cling to Rentero. He soon realizes this and is overwhelmed that two girls are clinging onto him so tightly that he almost pisses his pants. As they walk to the nurse's office, the girls and Rentero realized they were in the same class. Inda and Hakari overheard two students talking about a four-leaf clover that had the ability to give even girls unlimited rise, which they could use to ask any guy out. This made them run out, leaving Rentero behind to search for the four-leaf clover. A few hours later after lectures ended, Rentero was walking home and stumbled on Inda and Hakari on the pink field and was shocked they had been looking for the four-leaf clover since they ran out. Rentero saw this and approached them with some drinks. He offered a drink to Inda but she was too shy to take it from him, so as not to blow her cover as she already liked Rentero. They both bickered at each other like two lovebirds, and Inda took the drink and ran off because she was shy. Shortly after, Ikari came and Rentero offered her a can of drink, but she had something else in mind. She wanted to share an indirect kiss with Rentero, so she told him she couldn't finish a full can of drink and asked if Rentero could drink half of it for her. Clueless Rentero didn't know what was going on, so he brought a smaller can for her. Hikari insisted she couldn't finish a small can, so Rentero decided to gulp it. Hikari's plan was about to succeed until she became overwhelmed with excitement and spilled the whole drink away. 
and could only watch heartbroken while her chance for an indirect kiss flew away. Rentero offered her a handkerchief to clean herself up, but instead, she romantically held Rentero's hand and asked him out while stating that she felt she was not the only one who felt that way about it. Rentero is in shock because this is the first time his sorry a** is being asked out by a girl. He starts sobbing like a grade schooler, and as they are about to get all close and cozy, Enda who was always in denial, came in bringing lots of soda to pay Rentero back for his nice gesture. She was jealous and in shock that the boy of her dreams was holding hands with another girl. Inda couldn't hold it in anymore, so she also confessed her love to Rentero. Rentero's lifelong dream was finally coming true as two girls had asked him out in one day. They both asked him to pick one of them, but he couldn't and told them to wait until the following day. Rentero had no choice but to go back to the almighty god of love at the shrine. The god told him he had to pick both of them and that he made a mistake and gave him 100 soulmates instead of one. To make matters worse, he revealed that he had to make all his soulmates happy or else he would die a horrible death. Rentero walked home realizing that the almighty god of love is not almighty after all as he had a terrible case of Alzheimer's. Rentero then got a genius idea to reject both of them and date both of them secretly behind their backs. The next day, he met up with both girls looking rather unkept. They were shocked as to why Rentero was looking tattered. Hikari asked him if he had chosen yet, but Rentero had such a big heart that couldn't lie to them. He told them the truth that he wanted both of them to be his girlfriend, and made a big speech about how he loved both of them, and would make them the happiest girls alive. Rentero brought out two four-leaf clovers, knowing they had been searching for it. Inda mocked him for believing in such a fairy tale, but Hakari reminded her that they once believed it and looked for it too. Inda blatantly refused to be a two-timer, basically because she wanted Rentoro all to herself. Rentoro pulled a brief romantic speech on how he wanted to hand the flowers over to them as he gave them his answer. The girls couldn't handle the sweet gesture and in the end, Hikari was the first unfortunate soul that agreed to be his girlfriend. This made Inda so jealous that she also agreed to become Rentoro's girlfriend, while Rentoro promised to make them the happiest girls alive forgetting that he had 98 more soulmates to make happy also. Rentero was so happy that he didn't even realize when he started talking to a pole about his new relationship status. The girls walk in and catch Rentero talking to the pole. Rentero didn't want them to think he was a fisco, so he distracted them by explaining how happy he was to finally have a girlfriend. Inda realized he wasn't loved at home, so she romantically told him she was always ready to listen to him. However, she still shied away like she always does, which made Hakari grab Rentero's hand and drew closer to him. Inda became jealous but Rentero took her hand also, and they walked to school like three lovebirds, singing each other's name. They got into the school and saw the infamously strict vice principal chasing a student which made them pause for a while. Hakari had a thought and asked Rentero if he had ever kissed anyone before. Obviously, Rentero only had experience with 2D girls and Inda and Hakari were his first ever girlfriends. Inda and Hakari then got into a battle to choose who would get to be Rentero's first kiss, leaving him to wonder how he became a Rita's god overnight. It was lunch break and Rentero and his two girlfriends sat on the rooftop alone. Hikare saw the opportunity to offer Rentero the food she made, which Rentero took a bite from and absolutely loved so much that he burst into tears. Inda got jealous as always and brought out some cookies she baked. Rentero opened up his mouth to receive them, but Inda stuffed it in one of his eyes because she was embarrassed. When he eventually had a taste of the cookie, he realized what it meant to be blinded by love in the literal sense. All these shenanigans were a plot to try and get Rentero's first kiss. Hikari had a good game plan to get a kiss from Rentero, but while she almost had it, Inda stepped in and stopped her by also blinding Rentero's other eyes with more of her love. It soon turned into an intense battle that made them fight for who would be the first to get a kiss from Rentero. When the issues escalated so much that Heka Re gave Inda some melon blows, clueless Rentero finally realized what was going on and told them that they could have simply asked for a kiss instead. Even after his speech, the girls kept on fighting even though his breath might smell like garlic. Meanwhile, Rentero being a genius Einstein psycho, when it came to safeguarding his harem, already cooked up a plan for the situation. Rentero then made a big confusing speech about his plan to kiss both of them and claimed it was going to be a random situation. He got them all blindfolded and commenced the plan by approaching Hakari, 
although he didn't know it was her. When he gets closer to her, he mistakenly grabs her plot, but Hakari doesn't mind and wants him to remove the plot armor. This made them start the plan all over again, but this time, Rentero ended up approaching Inda. Meanwhile, the wind blows and Inda's plot is flashed. A cultured stray cat on the rooftop sees her plot and jumps toward it as Rentero walks toward her. The cat plays some drums with her plot, but she thinks it's Rentero's doing. This made Inda kick him furiously, before jumping on him, as she started giving him terrible punches in the face. She called him a shameless jerk and a degenerate lowlife, and after satisfying her rage, she finally calmed down. Rentero had to start the plan all over again and paid no regard to his pain because it was a hurdle he had to overcome. However, after many tries, the plan failed over and over again, and they were all tired out and wondered why kissing was so hard. Once again, the girls began to bicker as they lay claim to poor Rentero, who didn't know how to feel at this point. Rentero stops them mid-argument and takes all the blame upon himself. He claimed it was because he was a useless, inexperienced boyfriend. With no game, who hadn't had his first kiss and ran away. Rentero called out the vice principal's name, who attacked anybody she saw running in the hallway, and French kissed them as a punishment. Before the vice principal could kiss Rentero, Inda and Hakari came to his rescue. They asked Rentero why he ran off like that, so he told them he loved them so much and he wanted them to get along. This got Inda and Hakari so emotional that they both reluctantly agreed that any of them could have the first kiss. It was a blow-up of emotions as Rentero hugged both his girlfriends who had finally decided to let his harem bloom. Rentero then came up with another master plan where all three of them should share a kiss at the same time, in other words, a kiss song. Although it sounded stupid, they eventually pulled it off and probably summoned a UFO with their weird ritual they called a kiss. The next day at school, Rentero and his girlfriends were in the library where Inda and Hakari were trying to impress Rentero by getting a cookbook so they could cook different kinds of meals for him. Rentero decides to browse the bookshelf himself until he finds a book he likes. As he was about to pick it up from the bookshelf, he bumped into the hand of a girl trying to pick up the same book, causing a Netflix romance moment. When they locked eyes, <laughs> Rentero had the same soulmate sensation again, and he wondered if this mystery girl was also his soulmate. The whole mysterious encounter troop got her so flustered as she was a shy girl. She wanted to run off after seeing Rotoro, but he urged her to stay and take the book instead. Using the book in her hands, she drew his attention to something written on the page she had opened. When he reads it, he realizes she is trying to tell him she is the librarian, and also notices her armband. She kept communicating with the book, which made him think she was a freaking psycho, however, he soon realized he wasn't supposed to be talking in the library. She asked Rentero what he wanted, and what he was looking for while promising to assist him however she could. Clueless Rentero started making sign languages, pointing out that he wanted a novel. This made her ask why he was acting like a mute, but this only made him pissed as she was the one who started the entire thing. Thinking that Rentero didn't want her help, the girl runs off but Rentero stops her with a hand on her shoulders. He felt sorry for making her uncomfortable and asked her politely for help. Moving on, Rentero wanted to know if she has any recommendations on romance novels, specifically the type where the characters overcome all the hurdles unlike Romeo and Juliet, as that was his favorite genre as you'd imagine. This made her excited, and she started running around in search of Rentero's specifications. Rentero wonders how a tiny lowly can function as a library, and is impressed she was doing her job brilliantly. She brings a bunch of pile-up books according to his specifications but somehow overdid it. Rentero freaked out on seeing the mountain of books before him, so she apologizes for scaring Rentero and tells him to take what he needs while she returns the others. However, Rentero was touched by her devotion, which made him want to read all the books because she tried so hard to help him. When he got to check them out, he found out he would have to wait a week to be given a library card. On seeing how disappointed he was, he handed him the book she used for communication which he gladly accepted. He finally asked her for her name, so she pulled out her ID card where he found out her name was Shizuka and they were in the same class. Rentero also introduces himself after which he bids her farewell. Meanwhile, Rentero's girlfriends were still trying to get a recipe book to impress Rentero. When he saw them working hard, he was so touched that his girlfriends were extra motivated because they had realized the stomach was really the fastest way to a guy's heart. Later in the evening at his place, he picks up the book given to him by Shizuka. 
This was a book with love stories called Circlet Love Story. Rentero began reading the first story, which was about a princess and her knight, who fell in love with each other. But the knight couldn't marry the princess because he was a broke a counter who would never be accepted by the royal family. Instead, she has to marry from a noble family. The knight was strong, and they both went on dangerous quests, putting their lives on the line. This story made Renturo sob like a crybaby as he always does, making us realize why he has been single all along. Renturo realizes the story continues in Volume 2 but at least, he learned something important, which was that he had to fight for love. The following day Renturo went straight to Shizuka's table looking all excited as he enjoyed the book. This startled Shizuka and made her blush red. Before Renturo can say anything else, she offers him volume two like a zombie who has been possessed with love. Renturo thanks her and thinks of a way to repay her. While his two girlfriends bicker as usual, Renturo sneaks Shizuka out of the class to a vending machine and offers her a can of drink. They both went outside to have their drinks as Renturo couldn't stop talking about the story he read last night. This made Shizuka smile and also said the book was her holy grail. Renturo wondered how Shizuka could talk using a storybook, because it had to be extremely difficult to flip to the right page. He surmised that she had to read the book over and over again to get used to it, which made her explain that she never had friends and had only books to keep her company. She also thanks him for talking freely with her, even though she is a weirdo, and this made him ask to borrow the first volume again. Back at the library, she even does her duties more extra than usual, which made the librarian ask her why she was so pumped. Later on, she spotted the book that brought her and Renturo together on the shelf. This made her remember the moment they met, so she tried to get the book from the shelf. Three passed and Shizuka hadn't seen Renturo again, and this made her gloomy. While walking down the hallway, she sees Renturo and his girlfriends sitting outside in the garden. Shizuka spies on him and watches Hikari kiss him. Renturo shamelessly thanks her for kissing him, while Inda begs him to share some feminine energy with him only to headbutt him. She is disappointed that Renturo already has a girlfriend. She recalled how she was treated like an outcast by her peers and called a freak with no social skills because she talked using a notebook. Even her mother rejected her because she was giving her the creeps. She then concluded that nobody would have time to talk to a freak like her, and he eventually went back to her usual soaping librarian world. Suddenly, she sees Renturo walk in and brighten up her day. Renturo wanted to thank her for lending him her books, so he asked if she had a smartphone and installed a text-to-speech app that would help her say what she wanted. Renturo did that by typing volume one of Circlet Love Story into it. When she realized he manually typed the entire novel in three days, she concluded she was going to marry him, which might just be his strategy from the beginning. Renturo asked her to try the new app he installed for her by picking a word to say but instead, she confessed her love to him. FBI, open up! Renturo grabbed her and also confessed, telling her he loved her too. The two delusional lovebirds thought they were characters from the novel and drowned themselves in fantasy land. Afterward, Renturo goes to ask permission from Inda Mitakuri to let him take Shizuka as his newest girlfriend, but Inda loses it and asks him if his brain had gotten rotten after she headbutted him. Hikari thought it was touching that he had such a wide heart to accommodate the three of them at once, and this made him affirm to them that his feelings haven't shifted from them to Shizuka. Renturo tells them that meeting Shizuka has opened a reserve of love, and he now has enough for the three of them. Renturo promises to cherish each of them equally, and if he doesn't, he'll atone for it by committing seppuku. Renturo convinced them to agree to let Shizuka join their harem with his not-so-wise words, while Insul Brain Hakari fanned the flame of his playboy Riz by calling him a real man. Afterward, Renturo formally introduced Shizuka as his new girlfriend, and she was pleased to be part of the winning team. As they get to know each other, Renturo shows how well he knows his girlfriends by telling them their habits even the ones they never thought anyone noticed. This makes them both shocked and embarrassed and impressed by his devotion towards them. When Renturo talks about kissing, Shizuka loses her composure as she thought the relationship was PG-9. While Inda and Hakari took turns feeding Renturo with the food they prepared specially for him, they soon began to fight and argue because both wanted Renturo to accompany them home. Renturo couldn't help but notice Shizuka was quiet and felt left out of the couple's fun time. He suspected she was still shy since she wasn't yet familiar with Inda and Hekka Rai. 
This made him prepare to carry her along, so he suggested they play a game called Old Maid. Renturo added the penalty that whoever loses gets tickled by the winner, because he had this crazy idea. That laughter brings out a person's true character. He tagged his plan operation, everyone tickles each other, so we become friendly. The girls couldn't help but think of how pleasurable it would be to get tickled by Rentero. The first round of the game begins and the loser is Inda. Inda could not hide the fact that she wanted Rentero to tickle her so badly. She even laid down as though Rentero wanted to develop plot with her. The second round ended and the winner was also Rentero, while the loser was Hekka Ray. She jumped for joy and popped her melons which got Inda angry as she was flatter than a surfboard. Rentero started tickling Hekari, which made her so excited that her floodgates almost opened. Rentero was having a field day as he also won the third round, but this time the loser was all quite Shizuka. Rentero's plan was finally coming together, causing him to fantasize about how Shizuka's laugh would sound as he approached her for a tickle. He starts tickling her and expects a pretty laugh from her mouth, but surprisingly Shizuka gives a big laugh from her text-to-speech app. This surprised Rentero, but he enjoyed watching her face as he tickled her. Rentero kept tickling Shizuka, while the girls tried hard to ignore the weird situation. Meanwhile, India and Hakauri soon realized Rentero had not lost a round. They both tried their best to win the next round, so they could also feel Rentero's body. Rentero eventually lost the fourth round, but the winner turned out to be Shizuka. Inda and Hakauri were pissed that fate didn't smile on them. Shizuka went to Rentero, and gave the weakest tickle in the history of tickling. But Rentero kept laughing and said it tickled him more than he actually expected. Hikari couldn't help but wonder why Rentero was attracted to such a timid girl as Shizuka. She then assumed he probably had a lolicon fetish, which made her fear for his future. After the entire tickle fest, Rentero walks away but shortly trouble sparks as Inda confronts Shizuka. And it asks her what her plan is and why she is the only one keeping her distance from Rentero. She wanted to know why she didn't touch Rentero all over when she had the chance, but Shizuka replied by saying that Inda and Hakari were Rentero's first lovers and she didn't want to be in their way. Inda tells her she is now also Rentero's girlfriend, so she shouldn't hesitate to do or say whatever she wants. This made Shizuka apologize earnestly, but Inda was pissed that she didn't fight back and tried to strangle her. Shizuka then speaks from her heart and tells them that she is afraid because they have better feminine qualities than her and she doesn't feel up to their standard. Inda and Hakari are struck by her words, so they apologize to her for Inda's harsh and insensitive words. While they discussed and bonded, Rentero secretly spied on them with a smug look of satisfaction on his face. Rentero knew this was going to happen. That was why he left for a bathroom break. He did that so they could talk out their feelings and get along with each other without any distraction which was none other than him. He becomes teary as always because his girlfriends are finally getting along. When Rentero walks back in, he pretends not to know what happened. Inda rushes to him and demands they redo the last loser's penalty. She said that Shizuka had to tickle him properly as her weak poking didn't count. Shizuka realizes the effort Inda was putting in was to help, which made her determined not to waste Inda's effort and asks for a kiss from Rentero instead. Rentero becomes emotional on realizing Shizuka wants to share a kiss with him. He reaches for her and taps her on the head because she looks cute. He drew her close and they shared a lovely kiss. Hikari saw this as an opportunity to ask for a kiss also and Rentero kissed her as she asked. Rentero turned to Inda asking her if she wanted a kiss, but Inda was the Sunder of the group as always. She told him she was not interested as she drew closer to Rentero. Rentero hugged her and said that even surfboards deserve love. Inda could not handle such sweet words as she flustered and started pounding on Rentero's chest like a punching bag. She suddenly stopped as Rentero told her he would love to kiss her. He asked if she wanted to kiss him, but Inda couldn't help but confess she also wanted to because the situation was making her cringe. Eventually, they both shared a kiss that will forever be framed in Inda's memory. Rentero thanked his girlfriends for being so amazing and explained how lucky he was to have them as his girlfriends. While they laughed together, Rentero recalled that he still had 97 more mystery girls to meet. Days later, while everyone was gathered at the notice board to check the results of their tests, Rentero returns to his classroom because he forgot his phone. When he got there, he saw Arie Nano, so he informed her that the test results had been posted and asked if she wanted to check it. Without looking at him, Ida told him that it was a waste of time 
because she knew that she had the top score. When she made eye contact with him, Rantero felt the familiar soulmate sing and wondered if she was one of his soulmates. So he asked if she'd like to accompany him to see the results, but she turned him down. He then returned to the hallway to meet with the other girls and praised each one for their high ranks, despite having one of the lowest ranks in their entire year. I mean, it's all right, like... He also noticed that Aya had the highest rank like she said she would, which he found impressive because she had a perfect score. So he asked the girls if they knew anything about her. They told him that she was mostly antisocial and had her nose stuck in her books all the time. Inda also said there were rumors that Ai was a humanoid Ai because of how smart she was. Later that day, Rentero's class went to the science lab for biology practicals, and he ended up getting paired with Ai. The teacher instructed them to cut up an onion, place it under the microscope, and draw what they see. However, Rentero noticed that Ai opened her textbook and drew from it instead of doing as the teacher instructed. He told her that it defeats the purpose of the class, but she said that scientists have already given the answer so pretending to be another Einstein was a waste of time. Rentero kept insisting, so to shut him up, picked up the microscope and placed her textbook under it. He asked if her senses had taken leave of her, but she told him that she wasn't about to waste her time to find what was already drawn out for her, and this made Rentero wonder if being the smartest person had caused some of her brain cells to stop functioning. He then picked up an onion and began slicing it, but accidentally cut his finger and got up to wash it. Ida had noticed what he was doing and said she had a more effective way to heal it before proceeding to put his finger in her mouth. Shocked, he asked why she was doing that, and she explained that saliva contains antimicrobial agents, which were better to disinfect the cut. After the class, he thanked EI for helping him and said he would like to know her better, but she said she wasn't interested in spending her precious time with an ugly-faced loser like him. That night, while she tried to study, Ayat kept remembering what she had done in the biology lab and tried so hard to get the thought of Rentero out of her head by writing down the number for Pi continuously, but it was pointless. The next day, she confessed her feelings for Rentero, but when he accepted them, she rejected him and said she had come to put an end to their love hey, yo, what the f because she wasn't ready for where it would lead. Rentero then asks her to go on a date with him to prove that their love is worth fighting for and promises that if he cannot convince her otherwise, he'll leave her be. On the day of the date, they went to an amusement park, and the first ride they went on was a carousel, but Aya didn't seem pleased. When she noticed Rentoro had an instant camera, she said it was a useless device because if the pictures were lost, they had no way of recovering it. But Rentoro ignored her and took a picture anyway. They then went to the haunted house, but she wasn't moved by them unlike Rantoro, who kept screaming. When he took her to the maze, Aya tried to find the easiest way out by looking over the walls. Finally, he took her on the Ferris wheel, but when he noticed she was scared, he stepped beside her, and she allowed him to hold her hand. At the end of the day, Rantoro showed her the pictures he'd taken of her and asked if she enjoyed their outing. Aya told him she did, but said the day was meaningless, so he gathered up the pictures and told her since the day wasn't one worth remembering, they had to erase the memories too. He then brought out a lighter and set the pictures on fire. But as she watched the flames, Ai remembered that if the pictures burned, she would have nothing to remember the date with. She then snatched the pictures from him, so he explained that it was because she was afraid of losing something that was why she reacted that way. Renturo told her that she had gained more than she wished to admit, which caused her to cry as she thought of the time they spent together. After wiping her tears, she told him that she wanted to enter a relationship with him because she was in love with him. Rentero accepted her proposal, so she grabbed him and kissed him before they headed home. The next day at school, he introduced Ai to his girlfriends and asked for their permission to date her. After accepting her, the girls let him know that they weren't happy with him for leaving them out of the date. To appease them, he said they would all go on a date, and Hakari suggested they go to the new water park. On the day of the date, Shizuka, Ai, and Hakari met Rentero by the pool, and he was in awe at how good they looked in their swimsuits. Even when Shizuka apologized for wearing her school swimsuit instead of a bikini, he assured her that she looked good in it. Inda soon joined them, but she had a cover-up on and told Rentero that she felt cold, so she wasn't going into the pool with them. Rentero tried to call off the date because he thought she was sick, but she assured him that she would be fine. So Ai suggested she sit under the sun to warm herself up. Inside the pool, the current made Shizuka's spine in circles, and Ai began to wonder if it was some kind of survival test as she started wandering off, 
but Rentura warned her not to swim against the current, while Hakari conveniently bumped against him and pushed her mummy milkers against him. Adai noticed what the sneaky girl was doing, so she grabbed Rentero's hand and used it to cop a feel of her plots, shocking both him and Hakari. Hikari then placed his other hand on hers, and both girls began arguing about who had the softest pillows, but they soon stopped when they noticed Rentero floating in his blood. They pulled him out, and Hakari tried giving him mouth to mouth, but ended up kissing him instead, so Aya had pushed her out of the way and did the same thing. Meanwhile, Shizuka's float got poked while she was floating about, so she quickly climbed out of the pool, but realized she was float wrecked. Back by the poolside, Ai and Hakari decided to get a male lifeguard to help Rantero, and the two ran off in search of one. Unfortunately, they ran into three nail creeps, who tried to talk to them, but Hakari lets them know that they are in a hurry before running off. One of them tried to touch her upper arm, because he believed that doing that would let him know how soft her plots are, but before he could, Aya grabbed hold of his hand. The delusional ass thought she was interested in him, but Aya set him straight by poking his eyes. His friends told her that they were going to make her pay for what she did to their friend, so Aya and I offered to go with them. She told Hakari to continue with the search for a male lifeguard, but stepped in front of her and told the guys to buzz off because they weren't going anywhere with them. One of the guys then tried to grab Hakari, but Rentero stepped between them and the guy grabbed his face instead. He told the guy not to lay a finger on his girlfriends, but the guy insisted that they had tried to blind his friend. Hikari argued that they only defended themselves from the disgusting lecher, who tried to grab her. Rentero told the guys that if they wanted to have fun, he was willing to go with them, but the guy assured him that they didn't want his scrawny-looking ass and asked him to take his girlfriend with him. Rentero told him that both girls were his girlfriends, which they didn't believe, so they asked him to kiss them to prove it. Rentero tried to refuse, but the girls kissed him, and the guys ran off not wanting anything to do with the freaky trio. Just then, Inda joined them and explained that she had noticed the guys harassing them, but on her way to them, she saw Rentero's almost lifeless body. She then stopped to check on him, but he didn't move a muscle until she mentioned that they were in trouble. Rentero then thanked Ilyai for defending Heka Ri from the creeps, and when Inda asked where Shizuoka was, they realized she was missing. Rentero went in search of her, but she couldn't respond because her phone died, so she had no other choice but to say his name out loud. Luckily, he heard her, so he jumped into the pool and carried her out, causing her to kiss him. Later on, he told the girls that he wanted to rest, so he and Inda took a seat, and while they were alone, he revealed that he was aware that she had been faking the cold. Inda tried to deny it, but he said that she was feeling insecure about her body, which was why she pretended to be cold. She admitted that she was, so he told her to stand up and took off her cover-up, revealing her body. Inda slapped him, but he hugged and said that she looked beautiful, making her blush so hard. He also told her that with or without plots, she was still attracted to him, so she kissed him after he released her from his hug. They then joined the others and the girls complimented Inda before they proceeded to have the time of their lives at the pool. Some days later, while the girls were pulling Rentero towards the cafeteria to get pancakes, they passed by the science lab and he locked eyes with a red-haired Big Malone girl, causing him to feel a familiar zing. The next day, he went to the lab to find the girl but met a red-haired half-pint Chibi, who welcomed him to the lab and introduced herself as Yakuzin Kusuri, a member of the Chem Club. She then offered him tea in a beaker, which Rintero tried to refuse, but she handed it to him anyway and told him to drink it. While drinking the tea, Kusuri showed him a test tube containing two different liquids, which she called the human magnet medicine. She explained that as the name implied, it turned the body into a magnet and asked him to drink it so she could test it out. Renturo tried to talk her out of it, but she forced him to take it, and just as she had said, his body began acting like a magnet. She then told him that the side effects were three nights and days of constipation, which he pointed out that she should have let him know before giving him the drink. Kushri then drank from another test tube, with the same liquid arranged oppositely, and immediately stuck to him proving that opposites do attract. When they finally separated, Rentero kept looking at her as he wondered why he found her attractive. So Kusuri revealed that she had put a love drug inside the tea because she was in love with him and wanted him to be with her. To her surprise, Rentero turned to the nearest sink and puked his guts out, making the poor girl feel that he was repulsed by the idea of being in a relationship with her. So she started crying as she pounded her tiny fists against his back. Suddenly, he started convulsing 
So she drank a neutralizer and gave it to him through mouth to mouth, and later became sad because she felt that without the drug he wouldn't like her. But Renturo let her know that he still found her attractive even without the drug, which he found surprising because he hadn't sinned with her. But his question was soon answered when she changed right before his eyes into the big chested hottie he had come looking for. Kushiri explained that a failed immortality drug made her small, so she could only return to her normal size for an hour after taking a neutralizer. She also revealed that she was a third year and the president of the chem club, which surprised him. Later on, he introduced Karusi to the other girls and asked for their permission to make her his new girlfriend. He also explained that Kusuri looked like a child because of an experimental drug gone wrong, so they wouldn't call the cops on him for being a disgusting pedo. After their introduction, the walking drug store offered a plot enhancement drug to Inda because Rentero had told her she was on the small side. Inda attacked Rentero, but Kusuri explained that he hadn't meant it in a bad way, so she apologized for trying to murder him. Next, Kusuri gave Akari a drug to make her hotter, but when she drank it, all her clothes melted off leaving her in her birthday suit. The crazy Kusuri explained that the drug made her sweat melt off her clothes because there was nothing hotter than a naked girl, but Akari didn't agree with her. Rentero had to give her the sweats he wore for P.E., and while she was stiffing it like a creep, she became worried that her sweat would melt off again, but Kusuri assured her that the drug only worked once. She then gave Shizuka a drug that gave her dog ears, making Renatro lay her down and play with them. And lastly, she gave the eye a hair control drug, which she used to pull Rentero in for a kiss. And I told her she liked how effective the drug was, so Kusuri offered her more but warned her that it could make her hair fall off. Aida didn't seem to mind until Rentero told her that she would look a lot like Smiggles if she lost all her hair. After the excitement died down, they sat down to eat the cookies and tea that Kusuri had brought, and she told them that it was her dream to apply to her dream drug research team and make amazing drugs. She then excused herself to go to the toilet, but told them that she had made a separate tea for Rentero and warned them not to mix it up. The girls figured that the bigger flask was theirs, so they shared the tea amongst themselves, but when Kusuri returned from her bathroom break, she realized they had taken the wrong tea. She tried to get them to stop drinking it, but Rentero said he didn't mind them drinking it, because the only difference was the flavor. Kusuri then explained that the tea had a drug that would make him have an uncontrollable desire to want to kiss his lover. She then confessed that she did it because she wanted him to kiss her, and he told her that she didn't have to drug him to get a kiss. Kusuri got excited and tried to kiss him but she was suddenly pulled back by a possessed-looking Inda. He also noticed the other girls had turned into mindless zombies as well, so Kusuri explained that it was the side effect of the drug and said that the only thing on their minds was to kiss. She called them kiss zombies and told him that because they had superhuman strength, they would not rest until they had kissed him. As the girls approached them, she said if she didn't give them a neutralizer before the drug circulated, they would remain that way for the rest of their lives. The girls tried to take Rentero by force, but Kusuri pulled him out of the way, and the two ran towards the stairwell door. They closed it before the girls reached it, and Kusuri told them she needed to get to the chem lab to make the neutralizer while Rentero promised the girls that he would save them. They began running to the lab, but the girls somehow managed to block their path, making Kusuri pull out a test tube containing a face-melting drug. Rentero told her that they were trying to save the girls and not disfigure them, so they decided to go around. However, their crazy vice principal started screaming at them for running in the hallway as she ran towards them. In her panicked state, Kusuri threw the face-melting drug at her, but all it did was melt off her thick layer of foundation, leaving her ugly ass face bare. Rentero was shocked by the hideous monster in front of him, while Kusuri couldn't believe her powerful drug was stopped by makeup. The vice principal, on the other hand, didn't want the students to see her true soul-stealing face, so she crawled away like a spider back to where she came from. Rentero and Kusuri used the chance to escape, but Rentero noticed that the girls had split up, and knowing that their goal was to kiss him, so he told Kusuri they had to split up, knowing that the girls would come after him instead. As he ran from Shizuka, she tripped and fell, making Rentero stop and go back to see if she was okay. He picked her up and rushed to the nurse's office, where he tended to Shizuka before he remembered that he was supposed to be running away from her. Shizuka then grabbed him, pinned him underneath her on the bed and started kissing him, causing him to momentarily forget his goal. When he regains his senses, he picks her up and hangs up, promising to return for her as soon as the neutralizer is finished. After leaving Shizuka, Renter tries to go to the chem lab, 
but Inda and Hikari block his path. Inda then throws Hikari at Rentero as he is about to run away, knocking him down before they pin him down and take turns kissing him. I mean, it's alright, like... Just as he thought of ways to get away from them, both girls began arguing, making him realize that even in their zombified state, they were still the same. He then grabbed the back of their heads and made them kiss each other, giving him the chance to head to the chem lab. But he stopped in his tracks when he found Ai inside the lab. Rentero hid in a locker to avoid getting seen by Ai, who came out to check if he was in the hallways. While he was there, he prayed that Kushuri would be able to complete the drug in time, but to his surprise, he discovered she was also in the locker. She then explained that she had hidden there when she saw Andiai in the lab. As Rentero tried to come up with a way to draw Andiai's attention away from the door, Kusuri started crying and blamed herself for ruining everything. She told him that her crazy drug ideas caused the members of her club to leave, and now she had messed with Rentero and the girls, so she said she was never going to make another drug again. Just then, she touched her pocket and brought out a tube of the neutralizer, making Rentero hopeful that if they gave the neutralizer to Ai, they could get access to the lab. However, Kusuri drank the neutralizer, causing him to try and grab the two, but it fell and broke in the process. Kushiri blamed him for wasting the drug, but he told the dumb girl that they could have given it to Ai instead of her drinking it. She then explained that she planned to enter the lab in her real body, because Ai didn't know her, so she wouldn't try to stop her from going in. When she stepped out of the locker and headed towards the lab, Ida ignored her, but the feather-brained Kusuri accidentally said her name. Ida then grabbed her and tied her up, so Rentero decided to sacrifice himself by running out of the locker, and immediately Ai, Ai saw him, she went after him. He ran into an empty classroom before shutting the door behind him, but Ai, Ai broke off the lock, came into the class, and kissed him senselessly until Kushiri came to his rescue with the neutralizer. He thanked her for saving him, and she asked why he had run off, so he explained that he wanted to draw Ai's attention away from her, to buy her time to change back and make the elixir. Later on when the girls woke up, they apologized for turning into hormone monsters and trying to kiss the life out of him. But Akari and Indus said they had no memories of their time as zombies because they didn't want to admit that they had the hots for each other in their zombified state. Kusuri, with tears in her eyes, then apologized to the girls for what she did to them. And after they forgave her, Renturo assured her that whatever mess her drugs made, he would clean them up. He told her that he never wanted her to stop doing what she loved. So Kusuri hugged him happily and declared her love for him before kissing him. During the weekend, Renturo and the girls went to a flower garden, which held a flower tossing competition, and whoever caught the flower bouquet got to dress up in a wedding dress and have their picture taken with their significant other. The event had been a dream of Akari since she was a child, so Kentaro suggested they take part in it. When they gathered around the podium, they noticed Miss Monday's distant cousin, Miss Weekend, telling her gang members to catch the bouquet at all costs. Hakari then tells the girls that they have to work together to catch the bouquet, but would draw sticks to decide who wore the dress. Rentero saw how pumped the gorilla syndicate was, so he suggested that Shizuka stay behind because of how little she was, while Kujiri took her drugs to make herself big. While the gorillas were chanting aggressively, the cute Shizuka was jumping up and down, holding her towel flag, causing them to wish they could keep her. Before the game began, the Mixti called on the tosser, who happened to be Miss Ababa their abominable vice principal. As soon as she tossed the bouquet, the crowd went after it, and although it was against the rules, the guerrilla gang started knocking people out of the way. Their leader claimed they were undergoing a standard training exercise, even though she used one of her members to knock people down like a bowling ball. Just as she tossed another member towards a carry, Inda saved her and declared that she was now part of the gang before going against the leader. As they struggled against each other, the She-Hulk, Sorry, she gorilla ordered her members to use a maneuver called Gorakane, which was them spinning around really fast to produce a mini tornado that sent the bouquet flying in her direction. Rantero went after it but noticed Shizuka gliding towards him with her towel, and realized that the power of the Gorakane had lifted the weightless girl along with it. Meanwhile, Shizuka noticed the bouquet and grabbed it, causing her to fall faster because she wasn't using the towel as her glider anymore. Akari, Ai, and Kusuri formed a circle to catch her, but Shizuka bounced off their large pillowy plots. Rentero then went after her and managed to catch her in his arms before she hit the ground, causing the Queen Kong to scream in annoyance. 
However, to her surprise, Inda extended her hand and thanked her for fighting against her, even though the reason she thanked her was that she wasn't close to the girls when their natural airbags saved Shizuka, which in turn saved her the embarrassment of being the plotless one. Renturo and the girls celebrated their victory, and Akari suggested they draw lots to decide who got to wear the wedding dress. The girls agreed, not realizing that everything was going according to Akari's plans as she was determined to be the one wearing the dress. She had marked the winning stick and made sure to keep it in her sights before asking Aya to pick one. However, AI suggested they all pick at the same time, causing Akari to panic, but the gods smiled upon her, and she ended up with the marked stick. Akari was overjoyed for winning, but Kuzuri started behaving like a spoiled brat, saying she wanted to be the one who wore the dress. As Akari watched the overgrown child roll around, she felt bad and offered to let Kuzuri take her place instead. She then hugged the girl, giving her a face full of her fleshy plots, but Kusuri told her that she did not want to take her place and apologized for being inconsiderate. After taking the pictures, Hikari thanked Rentero for making her dreams come true before she told him they needed to break up. Rentero was shocked, so after changing clothes, he rushed out to demand an answer from her. Not wanting the other girls to worry about her, Rentero gave Hikari a call, but she didn't answer. Later that day, he went to her house to find her and saw her standing by the window, so he called out to her, but Hikari signaled him to be quiet just as a security guard came to check for the source of the disturbance. After the guard left, Renturo got a call from an unknown number, which turned out to be Hakuri who told him to leave, but he insisted on staying until she explained why she wanted to break up with him. Hakuri told him that she had fallen out of love with him, but he knew she was telling lies and demanded the truth, so she told him that her mother didn't approve of their relationship. While she was speaking, her mother approached her and closed the curtains before taking the phone and threatening him to stay away from her daughter. Renturo tried to reason with her, but the security guard came back and dragged him off, saying there was nothing he could do. While they walked home, Renturo remembered the harsh words of Akari's mother and felt so useless because he was neither smart enough nor rich enough to go against the woman. While he was thinking of his problem, he noticed a four-leaf clover, which made him remember all the time he spent with Akari and came to a conclusion. That night, he informed the other girls about what happened with Akari and told them he was going to break her out of her house. The girls pointed out that even if he managed to save Akari, her mother would hunt them to the ends of the earth to get her daughter back. He said he didn't care what happened as long as he got her out of the house and begged the girls to wait for them. Inda told him that he was a fool if he thought they were going to wait until he came back to them. Rentero realized that he was being selfish by asking them to wait for him and trying to say something, but Inda cut him off. She said she was going to go with him instead of sitting around and waiting for him to return. The other girls also insisted on going with him since they knew he wasn't smart enough to break Akari out alone. They made it to Akari's house and climbed over the fence to get into the house after which Rentero warned them to be careful of the security guards around. Rentero then pulled a rubber ball from his bag and explained that he'd throw the ball at her window to get Akari's attention. Rentero threw the ball at the window, but since he wasn't a pro pitcher his aim was so the ball missed its target and bounced off the wall instead. Inda noticed the ball had rolled towards a cat and tried to get it back, but the sneaky feline took off with it, causing Bulfer and Kusuri, who also tried to grab it, to fall on their faces. The cat ran towards Aya, who suggested dropkicking it to retrieve the ball, but Renturo pointed out that what she was proposing was inhumane and tried to grab the cat. Just then, they heard a security guard approach, so they quickly hid along with the cat but it jumped out of Rentero's hand and walked towards the guard, who began playing with it. With her ball gone, their only option was to go into the house, but none of them were small enough to fit through the cat flap. Ayanai then took some pebbles, which she launched at a particular angle and speed to force the lock on the door to open. But before they went in, Rentero noticed Ayanai's nail had split because of the pebbles and was bleeding, so he asked Inda to take out some bandages and disinfectant from his bag. After tending to the injury, Inda scolded Ayai for being reckless, but she said she wanted to make sure they saved Akori because she owed her a debt. They then proceeded to enter the house but stopped in their tracks when they heard a low growl coming from the shadows. The simple-minded Kusuri screamed, saying they were about to be eaten by a bear, but Inda pointed out that it was a guard dog the moment it stepped into the light, causing Rentiro to order them out of the house. Outside, Rentiro discovered Shizuka was still inside the house, but when he tried to scream, Aya reminded him that raising his voice would alert the security guards. Shizuka, on the other hand, believed that her life was over, 
but to her surprise, the dog sat beside her and began licking her tear-stricken face. Iyad explained to Rentoro and Inda that dogs had the instinct to protect the weak, and it seemed that it could tell that Shizuka was a weakling, which was why it stopped trying to attack her. However, if any of them tried to go back into the house, the dog would turn on them, so Kyushiri said she would handle the dog. The only problem was that despite being a science genius, Shizuka drank the medicine and immediately fell asleep. But it seemed that luck was on their side because after the dog licked Shizuka's mouth, it fell asleep beside her, giving them the chance to sneak in. They walked into the house after Kushuri woke Shizuka with the sleep-reversing medicine, but stopped once again when the cat tripped one of the infrared sensors, which made the security guards rush in. When the guards left, Kushuri gave Rentero an infrared eye drop, so he could use it to see the sensors and avoid them. When Inda noticed the envelope she had removed the bottle from, she picked it up, but Kusuri grabbed it and hid it, which made them realize that Kusuri had intended to send the drug to the research team she always wished to join. They asked why she had let Rentero use it, knowing fully well that if she didn't turn it in on time, she wouldn't get a chance to join the team. Kusuri explained that she had caused Akori a lot of problems with her crazy ass drugs and her childish tantrums. When Rentero finally opened his eyes, he was shocked to discover that the sensors were from the floor to ceiling but realized that the ceiling seemed lower than before. Shizuka pointed out that the ceiling was high because of the chandelier, making him realize that they could pass through the opening between the sensors and the chandeliers. Ariai then said they could make it over the sensors if two people worked together. Since none of the girls had the strength to do such a task with Rentero, they tied Inda to him, and the two began climbing up the wall feeling like Tom Cruise. After making it past the sensors, Renturo asked the other girls to go outside and wait until they came out of the house with Akari. As soon as they open Akari's door, an alarm goes off, and they are immediately encircled by security guards and Akari's mother. She then took them to the living room, and after Renturo begged her to let him be with Akari, she told them that she wanted to protect her daughter from going through the same partage she felt after losing her father. After her explanation, Renturo began bawling his eyes out, because he felt sorry for her, and after he wiped his eyes he realized his tears had washed off the eye drops allowing him to see once again. The moment he made eye contact with Akari's mother, he felt the familiar soulmate sing, and she immediately begged him to go out with her. Inda couldn't believe the words the woman had just spoken to her daughter's boyfriend, and wondered if she had a loose screw, but realized Rantero was equally going bonkers when she noticed his love-struck behavior. She told the idiot to snap out of his love days and come back to his senses, making Hahari snap back to her senses and try to play off what she just said as a joke. Inda knew the old cougar was lying through her teeth, but said nothing as Hahari told Rentero she would never allow him to be with her daughter. Rentero told her that he wasn't going to give up because he promised to make her happy no matter what, but Hahari didn't believe him, so she snapped her fingers, and the chair came out of an opening in the ground. She told them that it was a lie detector, if it revealed he was lying about his feelings for Akari, he would have to leave her alone for good. Renturo said he had no problem proving his love for Akari as long as she proved that the device was trustworthy, which she did by using it on Inda. The first question she asked was what her cup size was, and Inda called her a dirty-minded old bag for asking such a question but said she was his cup. The machine immediately said she was lying, so she had to admit she was a cup, but the machine still called her a liar until she punched the shit out of it. The next question was if she loved Renturo, and after saying she did, the machine called her a liar, causing Renturo to almost flood the room with his blood. Inda kept saying she loved him, but the machine kept calling her a liar, and each time Renturo lost more blood to the point where he could see his grandma waving at him from across the river Strix. Inda then screamed how much she loved him, and the machine acknowledged it as the truth making the almost dead fool on the ground to suck back his blood like a sponge. Having proven that the machine worked perfectly, Ahari told Rentero it was his turn and when the machine proved he was being honest, she fell to her knees in disbelief. However, she stood up, saying that the machine could be wrong and just as Enda was arguing with her for humiliating her with the machine, a maid came to inform them that Ahari was about to jump out the window. Enda immediately grabbed Ahari by the shoulders and threatened to snap her neck like a twig, causing Rentero to freak out, but she told him to go get Akari and take her as far away as he could. He was hesitant, but she told him that as long as he came back for her someday, like he promised he would she didn't mind waiting for him. Renatro thanked her and ran off, while Harry struggled to get out of Inda's hold. 
but Inda made sure to keep her grip tight because she wasn't ready to lose her best friend. Meanwhile, the security guards were trying to get a curry to go back inside when Rentero arrived and explained that Inda was keeping her mother occupied so they could run away together. Akari told him that even if they managed to escape, they would spend the rest of their lives running. She said she didn't want to live a life where she made him unhappy in any way, so he told her not to go through with her plan because the worst thing that could happen was him losing her and begged her to come back in. Akari tried to do so, but she became scared, and Rentero understood that she was freaking out because the adrenaline wore off. He asked her to wait while he came for her, however, before he could reach her, she slipped, but he caught her in time. The only problem was that he was in a bad position and was slowly slipping as well, so she asked him to let her go else they both fell to their doom. He refused to listen so they both fell off, but Rentero managed to use his leg to push off from the wall, and they fell into the fountain. The other girls ran to help them, and when Inda came out of the house with the Harry, she walked up to Vakori and slapped her before the two started crying. A Harry then realized that everything Rentero said to her was true, and begged him to take care of her daughter. But Rentero told her that he would make sure both she and Akari were happy because he wanted her to enjoy the life she once wished she had. Ahari happily pulled Rentero to her chest as she said she couldn't resist his cute face, causing the girls to stare at the scene before them in shock. Ahari then invited them to stay for the night, and while they were taking a bath, everyone was flaunting their big plots, so Inda left them because she felt insulted. When she opened the door to the room, Rentero noticed her exposed stomach and got so red-faced his head was smoking. Inda asked what the problem was and told her that she was showing some skin, so she called him a cultured fool for getting excited by that. She then pushed him on the bed, saying she was going to get revenge by rubbing her face against his stomach. However, Kusuri barged into the room before they could do anything more, so the two jumped apart and started doing push-ups. Later on, the other girls joined them, and a hairy dressed them all in cute pajamas, causing Rentero to gush at how cute Shizuka and Kusuri looked. Both girls then rewarded him with a kiss, causing Ahari to have a nosebleed, so she excused herself, saying she had to go to the kitchen. Rentero offered to go with her and, while escorting Harry to her, she told Rentero that she couldn't hold back anymore, so she invited him to her room. Meanwhile, the girls were wondering why they were taking so long to return, and Akari asked if her mother and Rentero might have been developing plot. Just as the girls were trying to convince her otherwise, they heard Ahari's screams of pleasure and rushed to find out what was going on. Upon entering the room, they found Rentero dressed as a girl, and Ahari rolling on the floor, screaming about how cute he looked. Rentatro fainted from the shock, but Ahari told them not to worry, because she had a plan to revive him and asked Adiai to help her. When she returned, she presented Adiai to the girls dressed as Prince Charming, who was going to kiss his sleeping beauty and wake her from her slumber. Adiai picked him up and kissed him, but when he regained consciousness, he took off the wig and said he was going to take a bath. A maid arrived soon after with some rope for Harry, who together with Hakari tried to leave the room until the other girls asked where they were going. The two shamelessly said they were going to peep on Rentero, so Kusuri said she'd go because she had never seen a real sausage before, and Adiai said she'd go because she wanted to prepare herself for what was to come. Inda said she would go because she didn't want to be left out of the fun, but when they tried to leave, Shizuka blocked their path, saying it was disrespectful to watch someone take a bath, so they tied her up in a blanket. Inside the bath, Rentero made sure to keep his towel on as he knew that Ahari and Akai were capable of anything, and just then, they lowered Kusuri down to the bathroom window to spy on him. However, she couldn't see anything because of how foggy the windows were, so she pushed her face into the window which made him look in her direction and screamed like a little bitch. Kushri freaked out because she believed he had seen, so they pulled her back up, and Rentero decided to hurry up because he believed there was a ghost watching him. Meanwhile, Shizuka began imagining all sorts of terrible things that could happen to everyone and tried to free herself, but in the end, she rolled out of the open door. Back in the bathroom, Ahari and the girls decided to use the attic to spy on Rentero, but got scared when they felt something furry touch their legs. Shizuka managed to make it to the top of the stairs, but as she was deciding whether to roll herself down the stairs, the dog suddenly barked next to her, causing her to roll down in fear. As she rolled, the rope holding the blanket loosened, but she didn't stop until she rolled into the bathroom and ended up in the bath. Rentero rushed to check on her, causing his towel to accidentally fall off, and Shizuka was blessed with the sight of the sausage 
but it seemed like what he was packing was too big for her, because she fainted. When he carried her out of the bath, he met Ahori and the girls, whom he scolded for trying to peep at him in the bath. Later that night, Ahori left while they were playing card games, so Rentero followed her to make sure she was okay, and when he found her, he realized she was praying. He joined her but noticed a picture of a young boy, so Ahari explained that he was Akari's dead father. He then asked why she never dated anyone after his death, so she admitted that she was still in love with him, but was scared she would forget him if she dated anyone. Rentero hugged her and assured her that he didn't mind sharing her love, as long as what the both of them felt was real, and they were both happy. Overwhelmed by her emotions, Ahari asked for a kiss as she remembered Akari's father had asked her to save her first kiss for someone who was going to stay with her. She suddenly felt shy and tried to leave, but Rentero pulled her back and kissed her, showing her how much he loved her. Later that night, Hikari went to sleep next to him, and when he opened his eyes, she confessed that she was scared that she would be with him again. But Rentero kissed her after which he assured her that he wasn't going anywhere. Sometime later, he woke up to the sound of kissing and found Hikari and Inda in a passionate makeout session even though they were both fast asleep and believed they were kissing him. When he left the room, he met the ghost of Akari's father, who thanked him for giving his daughter and his woman the love they deserved. Just as Rentero promised to take care of the both of them, the ghost was enveloped in a bright light, and he told Rentero that since his regrets for leaving Ahari and Akari alone had cleared up, it was his time to leave. The next moment, Rentero opened his eyes and wondered if he had dreamed the entire conversation, but decided to face the new day with a smile. Before they bid Ahari and Akari goodbye, Rentero promised to come to see Ahori as soon as he could, but the impatient woman couldn't wait, so she bought their school instead. If you've gotten this far and liked the video, let us know your favorite waifu in the comments section. Also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. See you guys in the next video.